right, good evening. It's good to be here in the Lord's house. Thank you for being with us here on our Facebook Live page. And uh, many of you are logging in. I just want to say hello to a few of you that are logging in. All the way from the Chicagoland area, Clement Chappelle. Clement, love you and your family. Hope you all are doing well there at Sunrise Baptist Church. Uh, praying for you and your family. Uh, also, Clayton Stamey. I've seen Clayton is watching with us tonight. Clayton, let me say to you, go Vols. And I'm uh, glad that you and your family are watching. Dee Dee McConaughey, uh, Lindsay Taylor, uh, Kaylee Cravat, Karen Coggins, Sandy Sutton, Kim Angel, Lisa Walters, uh, Kimberly Holland, Judy Brown, Roxanne Turner, uh, Jill Woodall is watching with us tonight, Judy Box, Jerry Simmons, Carla Jackson, uh, Earl Weathers, Pat Pearson, Mike Graham, Kyle Duran, um, and many, many others that are logging in, Ter uh, Terry and Carol Lee, uh, the Greens family, they're watching with us tonight. So there's a bunch of folks logging in, and you're logging in now, and we're so glad that you're with us here at Parkway Baptist. Tonight we got a special service. Tonight we're going to talk about raising champions for Christ. Raising champions for Christ. And uh, I've got a great panel behind me. Uh, tonight, over here to my left, this is Lance Cravette. Uh, Lance is with us. He is our children's pastor here at Parkway Baptist and uh, does an outstanding job uh, ministering to kids each and every week. And so he's going to be here with us. Also behind me, this is Robin Flanagan. And uh, Robin is our Mom's Day Out director uh, here at Parkway Baptist and does a fantastic job. Her and her staff, they do a great job ministering to all sorts of kids and uh, we are so thankful for that program. It's been a blessing to our church. And so she's here tonight to talk about children's ministry. Also, um, I'll step over this way so you can see him there, center camera. This is Brian Crow. Brian is a longtime uh, missionary with the Iwana International. Uh, he recently retired, but he's still working in children's ministry. And he's got a new passion on his heart. And he's going to be sharing a little bit of that tonight. And then, all, then last but not least, this is Deborah Addington. Uh, Deborah is uh, the director uh, for the uh, Cobb chapter in the North Georgia area uh, for the uh, Christian Evangelism Fellowship. And uh, we started our Good News Club this past year uh, working in two different schools. And man, it's been a blessing. We've seen kids saved, lives changed, and uh, we're so thankful for that program and what they do. And tonight, she'll be sharing with the parents tonight some websites and some other things that we can put some tools in your hand, mom and dad, uh, to teach your kids and to train your kids during this terrible time, uh, during this time of separation. As of right now at our church, we have two services. We are meeting at 8.30 in the morning and 10.45. Uh, we opened up last week for the first time and we had several hundred to come by. But as of yet, our children's ministry is still closed. Uh, our nursery ministry is available to folks that come, but we're not checking uh, babies and kids in yet. But if you need to get back there, uh, we have some folks back there ministering uh, to your family. So we're still working out some, uh, a plan to open up our children's ministry here in the month of June. So until then, I thought it would be good that we give you some resources at home that you can share with your kids. And so tonight, we're going to be talking about a family dynamic something that should be passionate to every parent and that's raising champions for the cause of Christ. And so I hope you'll stay with us here in the next few moments. Uh, Kenny Gibson, want to say hello to you. Shelly Slatton, say hello to you. Beth Mitchell, thank you for always watching and plugging in. Melanie Myers, thank you. Melissa Gibson, Debbie White is watching with us also. So a lot of folks are plugging in and we're glad that you're with us tonight and um, pray that you'll stay with us over the next hour. Let me pray with you, and we've got a happy, clappy song. Now, somebody may say, what's a happy, clappy song? It ought to make you happy, and ought, ought to make you want to clap, all right? Jerry Pelfrey and his wife, and Curtis is going to sing one of these old-fashioned hymns that's been around for a long time, and I know they're ready to sing for you. Let me pray with you, and we'll get right started right with our program. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your grace. And tonight, Lord, we pray that you would lead us and guide us and direct us by the power of your Holy Spirit. It's our desire here at the church to raise champions for the cause of Christ, no matter what age. So, Father, I pray tonight as we focus on children and we discuss some resources that we can place into mom and dad's hands, 
where they can train their kids and teach their kids the timeless truths of the Word of God. May you lead us and guide us and direct us by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we ask you to keep us safe and to watch out over us and to help us during this time. And Lord, I pray for our panel that you bless them and their efforts. Jerry uh, and, and Mickey and Curtis as they sing. Our media team that's in the back, we're so thankful for them uh, being here and working with us and allowing this to take place so we can air the gospel across the uh, airwaves. Lord, I pray that you bless our efforts. Watch out over us. Help us to do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. One other thing before I turn it over to you all. Tonight is going to be the first night that our college and career and our student youth ministry will be meeting. I believe they're meeting around 7 o'clock tonight. And so, if, parents, if you didn't know that, uh, the college kids are meeting. All the social distancing things have been in play. And also our student body, our high school body, they're meeting. And Justin uh, has renovated his youth room. It looks great upstairs. All the social distancing measures have been taking place up there also. So you got time uh, to bring your kids on down here and get them here by 7 o'clock tonight. And they can learn about the Word of God. We're going to turn it over to Jerry. And I know that you'll enjoy the song tonight. There's a city of gold across the river when I reach it I'm told. Why don't you sing one more verse? Oh, the river is wide and rough the water, but my Savior will come for me someday. My soul will fly out to the Jordan, over Jordan, on wings of love. I'll fly away, not a moment to lose. Make up your mind. Jesus, love 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 from the moment you say, the moment you say how, you happy you you say, how happy you'll be. Take a moment and live. Take a moment and live eternally. Not a moment to lose. There's, There's nothing to do but make up your mind. Take a moment and choose. There's, There's nothing but love and glory divine. Just a moment you say. Singing, you'll shout, How happy you'll be! Take a moment and leave your services. Give for heaven is free. How happy you'll be when heaven you see.
guys, that was great. I'm sure you enjoyed that at home. I know we enjoyed it here. Let me say hello to a couple more people. Uh, Ted Gokey, Ted's watching with us tonight. Ted, hello to you and, and all your family. Uh, we have Danielle Morgan, Joyce Wright, Ruby Denham, Tina Vocal, Marilyn Wallen, Emily Wysong, Jerry Little, Brother Jerry, good to see you tonight. Thank you for watching. Ray Scarborough, Ray, hello. All the way there, I think you're still in, in Tennessee, go Vols, right? Ray's a great singer and loves the Lord, a dear friend for many, many years. Uh, Joshua Ball, Josh, thanks for watching tonight. I'm glad you guys are tuning in. We are talking about raising champions for Christ tonight. And uh, our panel of folks is going to be chiming in and telling us how we can take the Word of God during this time of crisis and pour it into the hearts of our kids. Now, Mom and Dad, I hope that during this time where our churches have been shut down, you have been taking some time to invest into your kids. Hopefully on Sunday, you're not giving them uh, you know, their PlayStation and their Xbox and letting them run around and kind of do their own thing and forgetting about the fact that it's your job as the spiritual priest in your home to tell your kids about the timeless truths of the Word of God. And I was talking to Deborah yesterday, and I said, you know, maybe uh, during this time we talked about how it seems like the roles are being reversed a little bit where people can't rely so much on the church to do the discipling and our children's pastors. Now it takes a mom and dad because the church ministries have been shut down for a little while. And so parents, what have you been doing? If you haven't been doing a good job, that's where we're here to help you tonight. We're going to put some resources in your hand and just let me read you some scripture to remind you what the Bible has to say about raising kids. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, it says, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that thou may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee in the land flowing with milk and honey. And here's what he says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And then the Bible says, and the words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. That is to love God. And the Bible says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down at night, and when you rise up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes. That is, put the word of God before our children. And tonight, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about raising champions for Christ and how we can equip our parents uh, to give them some resources and tonight, we're going to start with Deborah. Deborah, good to see you. Thank you. You are, you are a, um, half the person that uh, you used to be. You have lost a lot of weight since I've seen you last, and you're doing a great job. So tell me what you're doing to stay healthy. I'm um, trying to be healthy, Chris, but I'm also um, just on a special diet of no sugar. Okay. I've not had soda in a couple of years. Don't you hate that? God's no. not in that. You know that? Drinking <laughs> a lot of water. <laughs> but just just really trying to eat healthy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing. I'm down 24 pounds. Yeah. Uh, okay. Amen. And uh, so I'm so trying be, to do I've the same thing beat, a little bit. But I've got a lot more to lose. Oh, too. man. Well, tell us about kids. What's on your heart? And I think they're wanting you to get your microphone a little closer. And uh, so, so what's, what's on your heart about kids' ministry, and tell us what you can share. Well, I know parents are struggling right now um, with the children being at home. Some parents have become um, homeschool parents. Um, I thought it was interesting. I received something in my email, and I wanted to um, share it with you because this was tweets that parents have put out okay. about COVID-19. Um, one mom said, why use a coloring book when the entire house can be her canvas? Mm. Yeah, we can relate with that. Um, one mom put out there, my six-year-old takes on average 14 years to finish his dinner. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just things that, it says, um, me pre-quarantine encourages my son to play the piano. Me in quarantine, please stop. Right. <laughs> stop. Just stop. No doubt. Um, and another one I thought was funny. Preteen boys spend approximately 40% of their day jumping up to touch ceilings or the tops of door frames. Oh, yeah. P 
parents are going crazy and we can relate. I mean, and kids are going crazy too. And, but parents, just be encouraged that you are your child's favorite person. And they know you and you know your child and God has given you everything that you need to be able to raise your children. Right. Yeah. So um, it's interesting, too, the verse I found. I was looking up some verses. Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 20 um, said the same thing. And when something repeats itself in the Bible, God wants you to pay attention. But it, it says, therefore, let, shall you lay up these words, lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlet between your eyes. And you shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates. Right. The school's um, parents that have to work, they send their kids to school, and the schools have your kids. And you don't get, you've got time right now with them that you will never be able to get it back. And so treasure these moments, and as hard as they are, just ask God for help. But you can give your children your life story to help them repeat the successes and uh, your successes and avoid your mistakes. Right. Talk about life story. Brian, you've got something that you're passionate about, about um, grandparenting. And um, tell us a little bit about that and how do you take your story and share it with your grandkids uh, a lot of times, a lot of grandparents are the caregivers. While mom and dad's off working, grandparents are basically raising some of these kids. So talk a little bit about that and what God's put in your heart about it. Well, when you're my age now, you know, we're in that age. What is that? We're at high risk. Sorry. You know, I'm not supposed to be here tonight. I'm 71 years old, okay? But God gives us a special view of what's going on, too. Right. He gives us a special view of society. He gives us a special view of our families. Mm -hmm. And you know, our, we, Carol and I retired two years ago uh, from Awana, and our card now reads professional grandparents <laughs> because that's what we want to do. We want to pour ourselves into our grandchildren. Right. They've got wonderful parents, but you know, Grandparents play a special role sure. that sometimes parents, it just sub, just helps with what the parents are doing. Mm. When my youngest daughter was growing up, my mom and dad lived next door. And my daughter and her grandmother, my mother, had a great relationship. And she would go down there and just talk to her and just tell her what terrible parents we were. You know how teenagers are. And she might have been right to some extent. But it was a special bond that they shared right. till the time my mom went to glory a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So grandparents can be very important. Mm -hmm. But I think grandparents need to be intentional right. on what they are teaching mm -hmm. and what they're training their grandchildren to do. And I think we need to have a priority to do that. It doesn't just happen. Mm -hmm. You've got to take the time. To be honest, you have to put the resources. Right. Two, three, three or four years ago now, I get a call from one of the churches that I ministered to as a missionary, and one of their teenagers had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. and, and he didn't fit the mold. He, he, his mom was an assistant principal. His dad had a good job. He had a couple of brothers. Everything seemed great. Mm -hmm. But you know, that just, that just tears you up when you hear that. Sure it does. And God just put something on my heart, and I came and told Carol, and I said, you know, every week we're going to take one of our grandchildren out to eat. We've got four. So every week since that time, until the virus came, we would take one of our grandchildren and we'd say, where do you want to go? What do you want to eat? And we'd sit there and just let them talk to us. So are they high we're, rollers at the steak and you know, all the things? Or is it like hot dogs and hamburgers? What are they, what are they You know, <laughs> of course, we got tired of Chick-fil-A because they have a playground. Because at that time, you know, we had a five-year-old. How many grandkids up. do you have? We have four. 
All four of you listening to me right now, your grandpa is the richest man in Catoosa <laughs> County. <laughs> but, you know, and, and we do, sometime I have a grandson that's now 16, and we took him to All You Can Eat Red Lobster uh, Shrimp. So, and the second time we went, he out ate me. So, hey, I'm that's taking my else. grandkids to Crystal. <laughs> yeah, but and but normally the last time we last week we took our grandson. He 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 says I love Subway. Let's go Subway. So they're very considerate in that particular. Their parents have taught them that. But we listen and we tell them whatever you say to us stays with us. Hmm. You know, if you have something to say to us about your parents, you know, that's fine. Talk to us. Because I told Carolyn, maybe if somebody would have listened to that young man, sure. maybe he had something to say that nobody would sure. listen. Maybe we can just listen sure. to what they, and let's be intentional. It doesn't make any difference the price of the meal. It's not about the price of the meal. It's about investing right. into our grandchildren. Well, talking about being intentional, I know, Robin, you're intentional on all that you do for the kids. Tell the folks what we do here at Mom's Day Out because your role is you've got kids that are churched and that maybe don't come to church. Maybe their parents are raising them and some families have some challenges and you've got a variety of kids in a room. So how are you, how do you deal with that? I know we haven't been having the kids here through COVID, but what do we need to tell the parents to maybe help the kids through depression, some anxiety? You and I talked a little bit about that yesterday. Well, I actually met with a mom here just the other day that was struggling in that area. And um, we do, we have a plethora of different children with different backgrounds, different spiritual backgrounds, some with no spiritual background. So our goal is with our staff, and we, and we pray over this, and we pray over those kids, is that while this limited time they're like little sponges, our goal is to get the Word of God in them. Right. And to memorize it, because as we know, Psalm 119.11 says, For thy word I've hid in my heart, that I might not sin against God. And that's what we try to do by pounding and using hand motions and whatever we can do to make them memorize. I'm a visual learner, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. And some of the parents, like the lady I spoke with the other day, she's intimidated by reading the Bible. I find a lot of that. Even people that's been in church their entire lives and they're kind of, because they, they may feel, she's like, um, I feel like I don't have a big enough vocabulary. I don't know, I don't always understand. And I said, don't you be intimidated by that. That's what the enemy wants you to think. Right. You get in that word, and there's resources to help you. And I would mentioned some to her about reading, getting your books into your Bible parents to read them um, to help you understand. And, and, and there's people here. I mentioned our pastor's here. You can email him. You can come to us if you have any questions, but it's important for the parent to be strong in the word right? for them to teach their children because you are the greatest example your children will ever have. Right. They're going to follow you, right? and we are to follow him, and they're to follow us while we're following him. Right. And so um, our goal is to teach them the word of God. That's what you had asked me. And, and the simple ways we do it, I'm just going to hold this up. We use a Becca. Parents, you can order this yourselves and do this at home and, and help us. But it's simple with the little ones. Two-year-olds learn this. Two-year-olds can learn. One-year-olds, my granddaughter, our granddaughter, right. just turned two. Brooklyn, Lance's uh, daughter, they've learned these scriptures. You can say letter A, and they will quote them. Right. And it's repetition, and it's intentional, as you said. Right. And, and I'll share this as well. I, I learned with my kids from Awanas that this man brought to our church. He knows the church we had came out of. I didn't know the books of the Bible. That's why I shared that lady. I was like, I was there. I know how you feel. And it took me years of growing and being discipled to realize my job is to do this with my children and have more of a passion to teach younger parents that are intimidated by it. We're all in the same boat. We're all learners, and we're learning until sure. the day we die, whether, you know, that's when we're 97, we're still learning. Hmm. So we're intentional of, of our passion to put the Word of God in them now. Sure. So when they are older and things arise, it comes back because that's a promise. Right. Lance, what do you think? Intentional. When I say the word intentional ministry for kids, what comes to your mind? Well, exactly 
what Miss Robin was saying is with kids, the most important thing is giving them something they can remember, giving them something that sticks out to them. I can tell you what my dad did for me growing up, and I think it would be a wonderful thing for every parent to do for their kids. My dad bought me as many books on the Bible about Bible stories as he could. And to just sit a kid down and give him a Bible and expect him to read it and really want to get into it, it's, it's, I don't know that you can expect a, a younger child to do that. But he bought me all kinds of books, animated books, that would explain the stories in the Bible. And I'm talking about all kinds of stories, like the story about Mephibosheth and all, all different kinds of stories that were in the Bible. And let me tell you something. Those stories I still remember, and they hold life lessons, Sure. right? Just, just getting a kid to memorize a verse of Scripture is one thing, and it's wonderful. But if they read a story that is vivid to them and is entertaining to them, but it's from the Bible and there is a life lesson taught in that story, they'll never forget it. Amen. And, so, and, and it, it will help your kid and just overall in a general way to read. And sure. that's, that's what my dad did for me. He bought me tons of books. I had my own little library, and I read and read and read. And not every kid is a reader, but I guarantee you, if you get them some books that have Bible stories that are uh, interesting, and they're explained in an interesting way and vivid and animated, they'll get into it, and they'll start learning these Bible stories and in turn learn lessons from them. Well, I, I just looked down, and, and my pastor growing up, Dr. Ed Moore, Brother Moore, Good to see you here at Log the Line. And I watched your video the other day, and uh, man, it was an encouragement to me. Brother Moore is the master preacher of the Old Testament. And I have never heard anybody be able to outline a story uh, like he has. Um, talking about stories, I still remember the uh, story he told of David and Bathsheba. An, an amazing sermon. And then with Hosea and Gomer, I'll never forget that, that sermon. Uh, he preached a sermon one time, the gospel according to, I think, four women out of the book of Matthew and used the genealogy there and just told the story, and I still remember those sermons, sermons today. So there's something to be said, you know, about, about story, putting that, incorporating that in our teaching, especially for kids. I know, Deborah, you brought some things to share with our parents, some websites and other things. I think we got some of them queued up. Would you like to talk a little bit about that, what we can put in the parents' hands? Um, and the, um, I work for Child Evangelism Fellowship, so you're going to see on your screen um, that these are free resources that will help your children. The first one that you see up there is Kids Draw the Bible, and those, that's for children 6 to 8, and it's devotions that will help them understand the big picture of the Bible. There's prayer starters, there's Bible verses, and questions to help them talk about what they learned. And then the Stop the Spread helps children fight the spread of fear in their life with God's promises. Okay. I know on the way up here, one of the parent, um, I was talking to a parent, and they noticed um, that their child is, is really exhibiting a lot of fear. So this would be perfect for them. Then there's Wonder Fun Bible Let Activity Let me ask you book. one question yes. before you go to the next ones. Yes. I've got some folks from the Dominican Republic watching. Sarah, Roberti wants to say hello to you. Do they offer these things in yes. Spanish also? Yes. That's great. So maybe you that can might go be online and you can them. download them in Spanish or in English. Okay, very good. So and um, if you want, if you don't have the capability of printing them off, um, if you've got a missionary, um, I helped a missionary in Sierra Leone, Africa, okay. to be able to um, get them ship to him so they can do that then there's a wonder fun bible activity book for children of all ages with coloring pages puzzles mazes and a whole lot more the great greatest doctor explains our greatest problem and it is not the coronavirus um, then there's good news radio and there's good news tv now good, that good news tv is a lot of the um lessons that children that attend good news clubs in public schools Okay. So they once the public school could not meet, then CEF stepped up to the plate and they put all kind of videos and it's just very you can do one a day. Um, there are other resources out there, of course, not just the CEF, but one other one. I don't know if we can get the Seeds Family Worship. Yeah, and maybe one other thing we could yes. do is our, our media team uh, back there. Maybe you guys can take those links and put them in the uh, message box to kind of share with our folks that are watching right now. 
or they can uh, get a hold of that. So maybe if you all can do that back there for us, that would be great. So I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Um, you want to give your kids, um, you want to do really good by them by getting some good resources. This is an excellent resource, Seeds Family Worship. I highly recommend them. They have videos where it, it is strictly Bible verses, where, like Robin said, you teach them the Bible, and they do it through song. They also have hand motions for the visual learners like Robin. But they are actual scripture verses that are set to music that enables the children to learn the scripture more easily, and it's very appealing. They have 167 animated videos and 86 hand motion videos. And then in 2020, Seeds made it easy for your family to memorize 20 scripture verses. And now this is free. Other stuff on their website is not. But by providing free songs, videos, and here you go, family devotions. That's great. Yes. And the devotions are short. They're short enough that you can do it at mealtime. And then recent, recently, Seeds partnered with Answers in Genesis, if you know the one that does the ARC, um, to create Bible memory songs for their VBS curriculum. That's I great. have videos, and they are going to put up my email address. Okay. And I have some of these videos, DVDs, that the first five that emails me, I will send you a free DVD. There you go. They send it to me, and I'll share the, the wealth. Well, that'd be great. Now, I, one more I want to share with you. These people have been around for years. It's Doorpost. And they have some excellent material that gives parents tools to train up their children. Some of it is geared towards parents. They offer family worship resources, biblical character training, Bible-based music, Bible memory, and child training charts. And I recommend these charts in, in my parenting classes that I do. One of my favorite tools, parents, I'll tell you, they offer is called the If-Then chart. And what that means is, you sit down with a child, an older child, a younger child, you establish it, but you sit down with the older child and let them be a part of the consequence. And it's called, if you do this, then this is what happens. And you have to enforce that discipline, but it is, it's a beautiful tool that parents can use if you're going crazy. Get your if-then chart. <laughs> the blessing chart affirms godly attitudes and actions. And then something that I've implemented in my home, they have um, how to decorate your home with scripture. And they tell you where to, they have different scriptures. They tell you where to put the scripture in your home. And I used to use it as a silent weapon. You know, the Bible says that the word of God is living and active sure. and sharper than a two-edged sword. Right. Sometimes when your older kids are doing some member scriptures, but to this day, Children will read it. They might not let you know they read it, but they'll read it. Sure they will. And um, I remember to this day a plaque that my mom used to keep over. We were missionaries in Jamaica. She kept it over the sink, and I still remember that poem about dirty dishes. Hmm. And it's just interesting because we were standing there doing it, washing the dishes. We didn't have a dishwasher. She had four girls, so she had four dishwashers. But... Um, <laughs> Scripture and things like that, kids do pick it up very quick. So those are great resources, Brother David. That's fantastic. Do you have a favorite one out of all of them? No. Or they're, they're all equal plane? They are all on equal plane. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, Brian, yours is a little bit different. And, um, and so as you're gearing up, let me say hello to Garrett Leggett, Shelly Bird, Brenda Cardwell, uh, Giovanni. Hola. Mucho gusto. That's about as far as we go. All the way in the Dominican Republic. Glad you guys are watching. Um, anyhow, Brian, you talked about the, uh, the Pray For Me campaign. And um, tell our folks a little bit about that, especially our folks that are watching that are from Parkway. We're going to start this, but tell us how God's put that on your heart and how passionate you are about that. Well, I, it's been probably four or five years ago. Carol and I were sitting in our church, and they started talking about something we're going to bring into our church. It's called Pray For Me. And basically, it, is a, it was designed to help keep the teenagers engaged in church after they get out of high school because the majority of them, 80% of them, leave. Right. And, and that just breaks your heart. 
But the, the thing is, if you can get one or more people outside of the family to build a relationship with that child, mm -hmm. the likelihood of them staying engaged in church is much, much greater. Right. And, and he says, and, and what we're going to do is just pray. We're going to ask you, would you be willing to commit to be intentional about praying for one of the children or youth in our church? Right. And I looked at Carol, I said, well, we could do that. Now, we're not going to go on a retreat with them. You know, <laughs> we're not going to mentor them. But we can pray for them. That's right. So a couple of weeks later, we had our kickoff there. And at that day, there was about 100 youth, about 300 adults. The adults were broken into three groups by age. And then each youth picked three people to be their prayer champion. Mm. We're home a few days later, and we're praying for our youth at our church. And we're working through the prayer guide. And it is a marvelous prayer guide. Mm. It, it's amazing. You're mm. praying scripture over these kids. Excellent. And, and we're praying. And I said, Carolyn, we need to pray this for our grandchildren. Now, we've been praying for our grandkids, but not like this, mm. to pray scripture over them. And, and God just opened up a whole new arena for us. As a matter of fact, Carolyn would get up in the morning, and she would type out the prayers out of this prayer guide and text it to our son-in-law there in North Carolina, mm. and it's about 7 in the morning, that's when he's taking the kids to school. It would come on his phone, and he'd look it up. He'd say, here, here's what Grand and Granddad are praying for you today. That's great. And you know, it just, because prayer, is, it's not hindered by space or time. Mm -hmm. it, just because they lived in North Carolina, those prayers are just effective. Yeah, man, that's great. And man, I'm telling you, it opened up a whole new avenue for us. And we're encouraging grandparents, church members, CEF workers. W would you commit to pray? Just right. pray. Right. You know, it's, Which it's anybody that you, can do. That's and that's yep. the most powerful thing you can do. Right. And and I could tell you many stories about it, but it was just awesome. And and Dave and I, Pastor Dave and I, have been talking about starting the Pray for Me campaign right here at Parkway. We was getting ready to start it. What, just a few days ago? Right. But guess what? Along comes COVID. COVID. But we're still going to do it. Mm -hmm. And now, we don't know about the timing, but we I really believe this is one of the most powerful things we can do. And the author, pray. We the both, author all three is of us Tony Souter. Yep, your he lives right up who we, you know, it's crazy. We were about two weeks into this, and I looked at the back of the book, and Tony Souter, Chattanooga, Tennessee. So I called him. Hey, can we have lunch? I've never met him. Since that time, we've become friends. Mm -hmm. We've gone to a lot of meetings together. You've met him. Yep, Tony's you know, a great guy. And he's a marvelous guy. Yep. And, you know, Tony has become a very good friend of ours. Mm -hmm. and, and I just encourage grandparents. As a matter of fact, he'll be coming out with this book in a matter of months, specifically for grandparents to pray for grandkids. their grandchildren. That's great. It, it's, it's powerful. That's fantastic. Can, can I indulge a minute? Yeah, go ahead. Let, let, can I just pray one of the prayers yeah, pray. uh, for the kids? This is, this is one of the essentials, and there's seven of them. We won't go a whole lot into it. But this is about favor. And see, the thing is you're praying Scripture. You know, that's, that, that's a neat thing. And it says... Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, and the victory, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is thine. O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it makes great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, O God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. First Chronicles 29, 11 through 13. Mm -hmm. Then here's the prayer. 
And now you can go word for word. You can change it. You can add things. But here's, here's the prayer. Just listen to this. Father, you are great and worthy to be praised. I pray that our grandkids, and we prayed it for each one of them, would know and embrace your favor and never stop growing in wonder and amazement of your greatness. Awaken their hearts and minds to comprehend that all goodness flows from your hand. When you look at the heavens, cause them to know the heavens are yours. Create in them a relentless reliance on you and your provision of favor in all of life. Enable them to be enthralled by you as the giver of all things. It Give them exuberant praise and thankfulness at the thought of your glorious name. Mm. For your glory and their good, in the sovereign name of Jesus, amen. That's, That's great. one example. You know, Just not only every is it a day. great prayer for the, the kid, but it also teaches the person how to pray. Some people and, are awkward about prayer, so it's a great resource. And, and, it, and, it's, and I like what Tony says, it softens your heart. Right. Right. towards these kids you're praying for. Sure. And it does. Sure. That's a great resource. And, and, and I'm looking forward to starting this right here. And I hope Parkway. that all of our parents that are listening and grandparents that are involved here at Parkway, that when Brian gets this started, that you'll jump on this, and this will be a blessing to you. Let me move along a little bit. Um, Robin, I know you've got some websites and some things that you, you do with uh, your kids Tell our parents about it, and I think we can put it up on the screen, and also our guys will be putting them in the comment box for you also. Tell our parents a little bit about it. Well, some that we use during chapel hour at Mom's Day Out on Thursdays, we always use the praise and worship from Worship House Kids. I'm a big fan of Yancey. I know Lance incorporates that as well. I love her stuff because she is, you're singing the word of God. It's all straightforward. There's, it's on obedience and how big he is and he's our best friend. So we use that so often. They actually have little movie clips you can look on there. It's all free. It lets you play it for free. Um, so that's what we use with our worship time. Also, you can go to ministry to children.com and they actually have Bible lessons for Sunday school curriculum and children's church. And it goes by age group. You can have an elementary um, age and up, and it'll have preschool. And you can utilize that, and it gives coloring sheets. If you are able to print off things at home, you can read through that yourself, prepare yourself in the scripture, and look at it, and come up with creative object lessons. I like to use object lessons, and we use them quite often, our staff when we teach, um, to, to drive the point home. Like Lance was saying, it's very important to have that for them to, to remember the story. And it'll have that information on there and links with coloring pages. Because we recently did one with creation, and it had each day that you could print off of creation. And in the number, it had what happened that day. And so it helped trigger, you know, God said, let there be light, and then the different days of creation. So it's very helpful um, for you as a parent if you can print those off and use those on those websites. Very good. Um, what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite one that's... Uh, out of out of all of them, which is your to go to one? Which one you like the best? If I, if the Lord has laid a certain topic on to teach the children on their level, a lot of times I go to that ministry children, and I may not use everything on there, but it'll give you ideas, and then you can read the scripture as well and pray, and the Lord will direct you to to you know to compare and and write down and come up to the the base of what you, you know, have different links on there that you can use. You know, parents have no excuse. Um, if they say, oh, I don't have no resources. There are so many things out there available uh, to parents. And Lance, what is it that you recommend to our, our parents about um, interacting? Key word to everything we've talked about is what it says in verse 7. And I actually had my Bible open to Deuteronomy chapter 6. What it says in verse 7, and thou shalt teach them diligently. Right. I don't know about you, but I don't know how many parents have kids that they can tell them something once and expect them to do it or remember it in, in any area of life. Um, with kids, you have to constantly repeat. And I know you're diligent about teaching your kids to brush their teeth, right? You don't just tell them one time. You 
beat it into their brains. I know you're diligent about telling your kids not to eat on the couch or, or whatever rules you have set for them. It takes a lot of time, and it takes you repeating that. But how many of us will read one chapter of a book to them a day or read one verse of Scripture to them a day, and that's the extent of the Bible that they get? That's it. And that's not how you, that's not how you educate your children in any other way. So I think we should take the, uh, the wisdom from the Word of God and teach them diligently. He's literally saying, Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, yep. when thou walkest by the way, mm-hmm. when thou liest down, when thou risest up. My dad, uh, you, we used to drive, I used to ride to church with him, and we had an hour drive. And the whole way there, we would memorize Scripture and talk about Bible stories. Mm. It was a constant thing. My dad was diligent about teaching me the Word of God. And you have to be diligent when you teach a kid anything. So why would we do less when we teach them about the Word of God? It needs to be constant. You need to be constantly talking about God and the Bible and Jesus and ministering to them. My dad, when he would discipline us, he would read the Scripture first. This was always like his routine. So um, I would have rather for him to kind of like spank me (laughs) instead of reading the Bible. Because when he started reading it, he's weeping, he's crying, you know, and that's, you know, that's, he's telling, he's pouring a word in our heart, and, and he's, you know, he's saying that famous line, son, of this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you, and I've always thought, I just always wanted to say, well, don't be so hard on yourself, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't have to do this right now, you don't have to spank me right now, but he would take the Bible, and he would, he would read it uh, to our family, and then talk about why he needs to discipline us, and, um, and, and, of course, tell us about the love of God. And he was, one of, he was one of them. He just always went to the Bible. Anything my dad ever did, he's always using the Scripture to back it up and uh, would, would read the Scripture to us constantly. And, and looking that, back now, some of them are, it wasn't a fond memory then, but uh, looking back now, those are some of my fondest memories of him just trying to teach us, you know, to be responsible, that when you do something wrong in life, it's going to bring you pain, and uh, even pain to others, and, uh, and then telling us about what the Word of God has to say. And so I'm sure we all could share a parental memory there, and, and I know we're running out of time, but I don't want to take your time. Deborah, tell me um, before we leave, we got about 10 minutes. I want to give each of you just a moment. Is there anything we need to say to the moms and dads out there that are not doing their job, they've been a little slack during COVID, been a little lazy, staying in their PJs, you know, on Sunday morning and uh, in their living room and maybe not tuning into a broadcast, maybe not reading their Bible, maybe doing nothing with their kids these past eight weeks, what do we need to say to them and how can we encourage them to get off the bench and in the game? That, that is a deep question. Yes. <laughs> that is deep. Um, one thing, there is a book that just came out by Juana, Resilient Child Discipleship. Fantastic and book. there is a quote in there that I want you to remember, children grow in the soil of their parents' faith. Yep, I remember. They will yeah. copy you. And one thing that, um, I, I, that I've never forgotten is if you can picture your child like a three-legged stool, children are emotional and physical and spiritual. Now, if you take a three-legged sp- stool and if you don't feed your child for a week or so, if defects is not knocking at your door, they're going to be sick. They're going to suffer, mm-hmm. right? So if any of those legs are off balance, and, and parents will be diligent about feeding their children, they'll be diligent to take them to the doctor if they're sick, they'll be diligent to take their children, and if they they are having problems emotionally, they'll get them to a counselor. But when it comes to spiritual, a lot of times parents don't see that as something important. But here's the thing, as that child is growing, that leg of that three-legged stool, is going to, the, the stool's going to be off balance, and the, it'll affect their life sure. greatly. Sure. And then you'll be dealing with it down the road more, and you, can, you, know, you never get it back. You can't get back the time back. Hmm. So I would just say, they're watching you, Mom. They're watching you, Dad. And what's important to you, you are their greatest teacher. And if you don't grab a hold of that role in their life, somebody else will fill that gap. And you don't want it to be 
something bad. You really don't. You don't want it to be something negative. Hmm. So step up to the plate. God is a God of love. Amen. He loves you. He'll forgive you for being slack. We've all been kind of reared back on our, and we can't get out, and we're in our pajamas watching the whatever. But when, when you can get, when church gets back to where it gets back to the new normal, and you can get your children, get them up, get them dressed, and bring them to the, word, to the house of God and, and teach them. But bringing them on Sunday and Wednesday to Lance is not going to fill, fill it. Right. You are Absolutely. the one that, and you only get one chance at it. Right. But the church is to come along beside you and to help you to raise your children. And we can be, a, they can be a great resource, but you will stand before the Lord and he'll ask you, what did you do to get them? And here's the thing. They're following you. Make sure they're the only thing that you can take to heaven with you. So just make sure they know the way Amen. and that you're leading them that way. Amen. Brian, what's a word to parents? Your kids are watching you. And kids or children are people too. You know, sometimes we just say, oh, they're children. No, they're people. Right. And, and I think you need to tell your children that God loves you. He cares for you. And, you know, we can say in, in Hebrews 13, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's to children, too. That's not just adults. You know, you need to tell your children that. And... Are children important to Jesus? Look how many times it gives illustrations of bring the children to me. Right. I want to bless them. Right. Parents, grandparents, bring the children to Jesus. They're watching you. Mm. And how you react is so, so important right now. Amen. Robin, what's your word to parents? My word would be... <clears throat> We're at war. Mm -hmm. There is a war for our children, mm -hmm. starting from when they're walking up until they're in their teens or in college age. There is a war against them. Right. The enemy has a plan. He's doing very well through social media, through the shows that are on TV, through things that are on Netflix that are supposed to be for kids. There's all kinds of garbage out there, and a lot of it's even subtle. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're not paying attention, you'll miss it. I have before. And I just want to read this scripture um, in Ephesians 6, and it's going into the armor of God. But the, the part that I wanted to say um, in verse 12 was, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness mm -hmm. in high places. There's lots of that here. And we're here for this time and this, this age to be in with all this going around to be the biggest light and biggest influence on our children. Right. And when we see them, even if they're teenagers and they make mistakes and they do wrong things, we've got to look behind. As Brian was saying, they are people. But they're at war. Mm. And the war is against them to take them. And we don't need to be lashing out at them but fighting for them. Amen. And, and, and I... It, it's just, I'm going to share this and I'll, I'll be quiet, but just like the other day when I met with that lady, she told me of an 18-year-old boy that had just recently committed suicide. And she said, you would have never known. Happy-go-lucky, always laughing, always, you know, the center of attention as far as, but no one knew, like you said, he was having issues. And a lot of times we're too busy right. correcting our children right. and not listening to them. I've been guilty of that. We put these pressures on them that don't need to be on them. Pressure does help us grow, but there's certain pressures that we place on them to perform that, especially in ministry. Sure, yeah. sure. With ministry kids, they all make mistakes just like we did. So listen to your kids and realize that there's a war going against your kid, and you're to help fight that war to bring them to the Lord. Man, that's a good word. Lance, what's your word to parents? Miss Deborah hit on it just a little bit. I'll never forget something my grandpa told me. I was telling him about a, a, my pastor, 
and I was explaining to him because he's asking me, well, where are you going to church? Uh, and I was like, well, we're going here. And I was like, I really love my pastor. He really feeds us from the word of God. And my grandpa, without missing a beat, said, son, you better be getting fed before you ever go to church. And yes, sir. you can't expect to just bring your kids on Sunday and on Wednesday night and for that to be enough for them to really grow spiritually. Uh, you, I think you were alluding to this verse, but it's in Matthew, and he's talking about suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. The word forbid there means to hinder them. And I wonder how many parents are hindering their children from really growing spiritually when they don't even realize they're hindering them. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that you become diligent. Like the verse said, morning and night, when you rise up, when you sit down, when you go out, when you come in, constantly feeding your kids and pouring into them. And one last thing, I saw a great idea. I read a great idea. I think it's important that you get your kids involved in ministry and in service. Mm -hmm. And one good idea I read about during this time especially is you may not be able to get your kids out and go door to door, go see the older folks, but they can write letters, especially to missionaries. Yeah. They got a lot of downtime. They're at home. Uh, have them write letters or write something to the older folks in the church and send it to them, showing them how to be the hands and feet of Christ, to be salt and light. That's a fantastic idea, so let me pick up on that. Parents, if you're listening from Parkway, if you will have your kids just write their letter and just say, Dear Missionary, that's how they can start it out, Dear Missionary, and then whatever they want to say, we will get those to our missions pastor here, and we will mail them off to certain missionaries. So if you want to get your kids involved, uh, just dear missionary, and then whatever they want to say, and Brother Joey will make sure that those gets off. That's a great idea, and uh, we can collect those, I guess, on Sunday, or if you want to take a picture of it and send it to us, and we can send it off to the missionary, that's a great idea to encourage our missionaries today. Uh, one other thing, uh, Brother Joe's got it up there on the screen, and I think you might be able to see it right now uh, where you're at. This is called Right, right Now uh, Media. And uh, Right Now Media is something that our church has invested in. And if you are a member here at Parkway, we would love to do something there. I don't know if you heard that or not, but it sounded like a sonic boom over here. It's my stomach growling. I'm not for sure. But anyhow, hopefully you didn't hear that at home. But anyhow, Right Now Media is something that we do here at Parkway. And um, you can get plugged into this if you're a church member. If you will contact me, I'll be sure to get you plugged in and uh, send you the link and how you can get involved. I sent a link out a few weeks ago. It said a gift uh, to you from Parkway Baptist. But if you'll look on the uh, site, and there, you're seeing that on the screen, there are hundreds of Bible studies on here uh, for adults and for children. There's a ton of children's cartoons. And... Um, you know, I have a grandbaby, and she's over there at the uh, house and watching some cartoons. And some of the things that they have on TV that are cartoons-wise, they're, they're no good. But all of these cartoons that are here, they'll point to Christ. And what's neat about this, if you've got a smart device TV, you can download the app to your television. And all the things you're seeing now, I can pull right up at my house, and I can pull up one of those cartoons, and she can hear songs about Christ about the love of God and, and things that are not so secular, but more sacred. And so if you're a member here at the church, email me if you didn't get your invitation. I'll be glad to send that to you and get you plugged in here to Right Now Media. Let me just close on this. Maybe you're here and you're listening and, and uh, you're struggling spiritually as a parent. And you feel like that during this time that perhaps you're not doing enough. And you're trying to teach your kids the Bible. You're trying to pray with them. And you're just depressed like so many other people. Know this tonight that God sees you right where you're at. And God sees your struggle. And God sees the trouble that you're in. And you may not be getting the accolades from a lot of people. Your name may not be in the church bulletin or on the church website. You're not uh, casted on a forum like this talking to other parents. But guess what? God sees you right in your living room. And he sees you talking to your kids. And he sees you praying at the dinner table. Uh, he sees you opening up your Bible with your children. God is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And so stay faithful. Don't give up. Don't give out. And don't give in. I know it's discouraging times 
We can't come together. Uh, even right now, we're coming together and our kids don't have the activity at church. Stay, stay on fire for Christ. Don't let the devil, um, you know, put the, uh, the flame out. Fan the flames. And you do that through prayer. You do that through commitment and walking with God. So know this. God sees you tonight. He knows where you're at. And he will bless you. And he will encourage you if you'll just listen to him tonight. So let me say to those parents that are out there, you're in the fight. You're trying to push back the darkness. You're trying to push back the discouragement. Let me just say, good job. You're doing a great job. And keep up the good work. And in years to come, you'll see how well God's going to reward you when you see your sons and your daughters raised as champions for Jesus Christ. So keep up the work. And you may be there listening tonight and you're saying, you know what? I'm not a Christian, but I am struggling. I don't know what it means to be saved. I've never trusted Christ. I've got a household of kids here that, that are discouraged. And what do I do as a parent? Can I tell you the very first thing that you need to do as a mom and dad is you need to bow your head and you need to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. The psalm that said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. And so we need God on our side. We need God in our marriage. We need God in our homes. And we need God in our heart. You say, well, Brother David, how can I do that? Romans chapter 10, verses 9, 10, and verse number 13 will go on to tell us, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is not about paying money. It's not about joining a church. It's not about a ritual or some type of rite. It's about a personal relationship with the God of heaven. And that is made possible through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, his son. His son was more than just a man. He was more than a humanitarian, more than just a good person. He was God in human flesh. Men and women, you need to know that it was God that died for you. Jesus Christ is the visible manifestation of the invisible God. It was God that was dying on our behalf because only God could atone for the sins of man. So that's how much God loves you, that he bankrupt all of heaven to meet your need. And your greatest need today is not more money, not another stimulus check. It's not the answer to the COVID crisis. Your greatest need tonight is to have your sins washed away in the blood of the Lamb. And the only way that can happen is by you humbling yourself and praying. Not just a prayer um, written down on a piece of paper and with no meaning. I'm talking about a prayer from your heart. That you realize that you are a sinner. That you are lost without God. And without Christ in your life that you are doomed for a place that the Bible calls hell. Whatever hell may be, the fire, the flames, the darkness, the smoke, all the things, the Bible, all the descriptive words, whatever it may be, hell is certainly the absence of hope and help and the absence of God. And so today you can be saved and you can have hope and you can have help in Jesus Christ. So will you pray this prayer with me? Right where you're at, within your home, pray this prayer with me. Turn your family over to God tonight. Turn your life over to God tonight. Pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and to my life. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to live this life that you have given me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, if you've prayed a prayer of faith, if you've trusted Jesus Christ, if you've got a prayer request, please put it here in the message box. Uh, our panel would love to go back and read those and pray for you and your family. And so we are so excited that you're with us tonight. And, and I, I pray that this was a blessing to you and all the spiritual leaders. Share it. Uh, send it to your youth pastors and, and your children's workers. Maybe this will be a help to them, some of the resources. Get plugged in. Get off the bench and in the game and begin raising champions for the cause of Christ. Let me pray with you and we'll, we'll be dismissed. Father, I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. I pray that you lead us and guide us and direct us by the power of your Holy Spirit. And, Lord, we will thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Panel, let me say thank you uh, for sharing with us tonight, for being here. I believe it's your son's birthday. Which one is it? Jacob, happy birthday. How old is Jacob?
Jacob's 20 years old. Jacob, happy birthday. Happy 20th birthday. And so thank you for being here, Robin. I know you got to get with your family. Thank you for driving all the way down this way and being with us. Brian, Lance, thank you guys. Curtis, uh, Jerry, your family for singing. Media team back there in the back, thank you for all that you all do. God bless you all watching. We'll see you on Sunday here at Parkway Baptist at 8.30 in the morning or the 10.45 a.m. service, and we're only live streaming the 10.45 a.m. service. I hope that you'll join us. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Have a great week.